Hi, I'm Norm. I was born and raised in Japan, and I'm half Japanese. When I was a kid, I took a couple strings off an old guitar, and that was the beginning of my career as a bass player. I now travel the world as a musician, but always love coming home to Southern California, where I live with my amazing family. Two of my favorite things are music and sushi. I've been blessed to play with some of the most talented musicians on the planet. I thought it'd be fun to get some of them together to make some music, eat some amazing sushi, and hear their thoughts on life, art, and whatever else comes up. Welcome to my home. I'm Norm Stockton, and this is Grooves and Sushi. What an amazing group of friends I have joining me today, including legendary drummer Mr. Greg Bissonette, trumpet phenom Mr. Brandon Phillips, Vibe curator on the synthesizer, Mr. Brian Willett. Longtime musical partner in crime and keyboard monster, Mr. Rob Rinderer. The mood injector, by way of guitar textures, Mr. Justin Hepner. And the sublime cellist, Mr. Erdis Maxelaku. As grateful people, we always try to play before we eat. See what I did there? But knowing what Chef Kevin has in store is definitely creating anticipation. In this episode, we'll be performing a fun tune called Lunar Mints. I should mention that while a few of us have worked together in the past, this lineup of musicians has never played together, and this song has never been performed before this taping. This is fundamentally why I did this project. <laughs> I was thinking, how do I get it so that there's a sushi chef at my house with all my buds? Van Halen had broken up and David Lee Roth did about the most brilliant business move he could have ever done by hiring you and Billy Sheehan and Steve Vai, oh. and you guys just tore it up. And I remember this? seeing you at the um, at the San Diego Sports Arena. You were there on the uh, which one was with the one that with the Yankee Rose? The Eat 'em and Smile and Skyscraper. Those were the two tours we played there. That was a fun venue. You saw the band? Yeah, there? Like man. 1986, 88. Yeah, when I was two, it was awesome. Two, yeah. Me too. <laughs> I was three. <laughs> college and playing in a bunch of bands and doing the music thing. 
um, not involved in churches at all. I didn't even know people played at churches and like made money doing that when I was in college. And then I realized that I can make more money doing that than at Starbucks. That's what I was doing. Doing something that you love. <laughs> uh, so I started doing church like services and and doing like worship nights and. Um, it was all very new to me, and I I was used to the band dynamic, not the worship band dynamic. So I just like showed up to like a worship service with just like my micro Korg synth, and was like, okay, cool, let, let's let's play the songs. And I just played whatever I, you know, I, I taught myself music theory, I, I taught myself um, all that stuff. So I was like, sweet, key is this, okay, cool, I'll play along. And I just played whatever I thought sounded cool, and they were just blown away that I wasn't following a rigid like. This is way better than what was recorded. Were you playing kind of the the texture vibey stuff that you did today, or were kind you actually of, like yeah. were you functioning as I mean, the actual I've, keyboard I've, guy? I've like uh, my my niche has like gone in and out of like different things, and um, but I was like just playing synth and like deciding like oh this is a crucial part I'll play that, and then if it's not I'll just like vibe and like make some noise. It started kind of out of left field for me. It was a way to get out of PE in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> had no intentions of becoming a musician. Hadn't even thought about it. Is that right? The music teacher was like, oh, you want to join? The, uh, I'm starting a band program. I was like, yeah, I'm playing guitar and drums, all that cool stuff. And they handed me this rusty old piece of metal called a baritone horn. <laughs> and it was just What like, is a baritone horn? It's in the same register as like a trombone, but it has vowels. And it's like the big classicalish, oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. bell points. They're like, "You're a big guy. You can hold this." <laughs> yeah. Honestly, they just ran out of trumpets. Trumpet was my very first picked horn, and they right? ran out. So I played baritone for years, hmm. and then switched some time in high school and just stuff. It was a way to get out of. This is me being lazy, and then made a career out of it. Bunch of classical stuff there, or what was, was the deal? Was there a pop much, scene that you're playing in? Uh, not really. It's mostly uh, folk, Albanian folk music. Was it's really big there. Uh, pop music is mostly covers, but not not much original. You know, from our Albanian singers or anything like that. Yeah. Is there a lot of cello in the cover songs there? Not really. Not yeah. like zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back then, um, it was I, I pre pretty much played cl uh, classical music the whole time, and uh, actually, um, when I was fourteen or fifteen, first year of high school, um, because I played the cello, uh, some friends that were studying for a classical guitar, you know, same class with me, they thought that I could play the bass, so they asked me, hey. We need a bass player for the band, so can you join us? You know, because I was sure. So they, they gave me a bass, and they, they you know, uh, tested how much I could extend my fingers right. on the fingerboard. I was like, okay, you're you're in. <laughs> <laughs> that was the audition. Yeah. They saw your dexterity. Exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah, bass was my sort of first instrument um, outside of the classical world. So how much did that mess with you going from uh, fifths to fourths? Uh, that's, that's still a still messes with me actually. I, it takes me a little while to kind of um, shift the thinking from cello to bass and back and forth kind of thing. Yeah. It sort of amplified why I got into enjoying playing music to begin with, and it was like the relationship between notes and how they responded to each other. My mom was a teacher, and we would sit in the school late in the afternoon, and the um, 
the grounds keepers would come through the school late at night while my mom was um, working in her class, getting her desks ready. And there was a leaf blower that would go through the hallways. And it would always keep on the same pitch until they put it into like first gear and it like, then it changed down to like, and I realized <laughs> sitting there reading books that I could hum and create resonance with the sound of the leaf blower that echoed through the halls of the school. And I started playing guitar, and I started enjoying that. Um, huh. and, and I remember putting chords together, because I taught myself, and thinking, I invented these chords, and when I found out they had names, I felt betrayed. Because <laughs> I was like, these are my, these are my chords. <laughs> I love the fact that this diverse range of players is so open to embracing all these different genres. And so yeah. that's like nobody's a musical snob. Everybody's got their, their wide bag, you know? And like what's, Rob, I feel like, has one of the broadest musical bags of anybody that I've ever met. And like what, has it always been that way? Did you kind of, love musical styles b before you're even a player maybe yeah because because my family everyone had their own styles of music so my my dad loved jazz my mom loved classical hmm. my sister loved classical and folk music and my brother loved rock so i was kind of getting it all when i was like two three years old you know and so yeah so it's kind of all in there it's like i i love it all and i don't see any reason just to do one of them you know but you also went as far as to even learn them, learn how to play them, which is, that's a, that's a, takes a different level of intentionality. Yeah, well, when I was 16, I just got into music so much. I was playing about eight hours a day after school until it's time to go to bed. And so you just, already knew that you were going to be a pro? That was like your goal? Um, yeah, I, from when I was 12, I think. I started playing when I was eight, and when I was 12, I, I think I knew I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. I know you get this a lot, but I, I wanted, now that I have the opportunity to actually ask you in person, mm -hmm. is it true? Is it too late to apologize? Huh. <laughs> it is. <laughs> 11 years late. <laughs> your instruction of it. It's awesome, man. Thumb up in the fingers. Thing. I'm trying to play, you know, do that, but it's hard. How'd, awesome. you, how'd you invent that idea? How'd you come up with that? I, does that. I most certainly did not invent it. You I'm, did. I'm adapting uh, stuff that my heroes do. Who, who are your heroes? That stuff was pretty much Victor Wooten. Just all the crazy stuff, Sinister Minister and everything yeah. that he did with the Flectones. And, um, Chick from Korea? Yeah. Which you played on all that oh, stuff. Well, all the stuff from Bass Extremes, yes. We're doing a new one. This, this is, is the guy right here. Uh, no. Victor's <laughs> one of my heroes, too. You're one of my heroes. Oh, dude. Um, thank you. Painful session stories. <laughs> Brandon. Man, I've had a session where I had to do like all my double trumpet flugelhorn, mutes, carrying my own stand in, 9 a.m. call time. <laughs> Get there, the guy that's like paying for the whole session and running everything didn't show up till about almost noon. <laughs> and no extra pay, so the session went longer than scheduled, obviously. And yeah. Just sitting all day in a cold studio, because studios are always, for some reason, cold. You're like rethinking your career choices? 
Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I was like, why do I do this? It's like, oh, right, because I need to pay rent. Right. Um, yeah. Because so. I love music. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, I got to pay rent. <laughs> right, nah, I got to pay rent. <laughs> Did you get the spicy one or is that? I'm about to get the spicy one next, but. That tuna is stellar. That's crazy, yeah. huh? So, what is the pepper you put in it? Uh, that's a habanero. I put a habanero for his. I will take that, but I'll take it. I normally use habanero because <laughs> habanero has the highest flavor to spice ratio. So, you can put very little habanero in it. It really brings out a good flavor. But the serrano and stuff, to get the flavor of the serrano or the jalapeno, you have to cut a thicker piece and then the, it sort of interferes with everything. Keith, our wind player and the first shoot, um, it caught him off guard and it lit him up. <laughs> yeah. I, I made it and gave it to everyone. I went out for a two minute break and I come back and I threw him like, ooh, and I'm there. His face was that color. <laughs> <laughs> jazz vibes in his band in Detroit and uh, you know it was Motown and all the jazz we always went and saw you know I saw your feed recently and by the way it's awesome how supportive your parents were and oh taking you to all these concerts what a what an amazing upbringing my first concert ever was the Cal Basie band wow. and my second was the Beatles <laughs> oh wow it's yeah when That's that was great. seven in 66 and pop rock has always been my favorite because of the Beatles and Stones and Led Zeppelin and the Police and the Foo oh, Fighters man. and blah blah blah, and uh, I love jazz. I love all styles, but it's always been so. Great. Were you into jazz before you went to North Texas State? Oh yeah, big time. My dream was I was a minor trumpet player, really bad. I couldn't hit anything higher than a high E maybe right. and three flats, three sharps. Forget it. You know, couldn't solo. I was a okay mediocre third trumpet player, but uh, my dream was to play with drums for Maynard and. I would pray, please, Lord, help me get the gig with Maynard. And one time I remember him looking at me. I was in the first row and I'm looking at him, I was like 14. And I was Maynard's looking at me. And he's doing the circular breathing. And I, I'm like telling him, I'm gonna play in your band someday. And then Peter Erskine was in the band and then they had all different drummers. And I kept sending cassettes and none of them ever got listened to because it was always somebody, somebody's cousin that got the gig. And then I remember once in Denton, in North Texas, I saw the Maynard bus, and I called the Holiday Inn. Can I have Maynard's room? And they put me through, and it was Stan. Oh, you're kidding. They put me through <laughs> to his room, and I go, is this Maynard? And it was Stan Mark, who was in Maynard's room. He was the t-shirt salesman. He was getting all the t-shirts, and he goes, what do you want? And I said, I'm this drummer in the one o'clock lab band, and I, Maynard's my hero. And the band came down, and they sat in. We had this like Stevie Wonder cover band. Stevie Wonder and Earth, Wind and & Fire, and they all played, and he sat right there. After our drummer leaves, you got the gig. So that was that was the way it was. Wow. So who you know. You know? I just had a natural, like, I don't know, curiosity about it. So I was just always learning how to do more. I was always going ahead in, like, the beginning books. Sure, yeah. So I was like, yeah, we're doing this chapter one. I was already, like, chapter nine. I was like, oh, this is cool. And it was like, I just got more into it the more I played. It was just, like, unexpected. Had no clue. Then I'll be listening to music. Wow.
our passport to the world. You know, we can go all over the world and play music. Brian flew in this morning. You did the red eye. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how you're still standing, you know. And did the One Republic gig last night. And I was hoping we were going to play Counting Stars too. But anyway, I'm a big fan. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it gets to, we get to go all over the world because of music. And I believe strongly in the power of prayer. I believe we were given our gifts from our Creator. And, and you know, if, if it's God's will and you, you pray about something that you really feel passionate about, uh, that's been the way I've worked my whole life. Is just, man, I'd really love to play with Maynard or play with David Lee Roth or, or Ringo, you know. and. Um, it says in the Bible, if you ask, you know, knock and the door will be opened. It, it's, people say, I can't pray about myself. That's not cool. It's too, you're supposed to. You're allowed to. It's, it's, yeah. it's what Jesus said, you know. So I, I believe that strongly, and that's how I raise my kids. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Mm -hmm. Awesome.